So you can solve your friend's relationship disaster in 30 seconds flat. But you've been stuck in the same toxic pattern for what, three years? Look, University of Waterloo researchers discovered your brain literally uses different circuits for other people's problem than your own. And once you understand why, everything changes. So today we're diving into the fascinating neuroscience of why you're brilliant at fixing everyone else's life, but clueless about your own. I'll show you Solomon's paradox and what it reveals about your brain. The psychological distance effect that makes you wise for others but stupid for yourself and well there's this ridiculously simple hack using third person self-talk that changes everything plus what the brain scans actually show might shock you let's get into it so last week in my certification program, this coach goes, Gregory, I just gave my client the exact advice I needed to hear, word for word. But when it's my problem, I can't follow it. Am I just weak? And so three other people jumped in and went like, hey, wait, that's me too. So no, you're not weak, you're human. See, what you're experiencing has a name, Solomon's Paradox. Your brain is wired to be wise about others and blind about yourself. But here's the thing, there's a way to hack it. So in 2014, Igor Grossman from the University of Waterloo and Ethan Cross published the study in psychological science. They had people in relationships imagine either their partner cheating or their best friend's partner cheating. Same scenario. Then they measured wise reasoning. You know, considering multiple perspectives, recognizing limits of knowledge, imagining different futures. The results? Well, people showed way more wisdom about their friend's situation and, and, and not like a little more, way more. Well, think about it. Your friend's toxic relationship? Obviously, leave. This is destroying you, right? Your own toxic relationship? Well, but sometimes they're sweet and maybe if I just try a little harder. Now, across three experiments with 693 participants in total, people displayed wiser reasoning about another person's problem compared with their own every single time. Same problem, completely different brain response. But here's what's fascinating. When they instructed individuals to self-distance, this asymmetry disappeared. Yes, there's a way to access is that wisdom you have for others. But first, let me explain what's actually happening in your brain. Look, when you think about someone else's problem, you have what researchers call psychological distance. Your prefrontal cortex, that's the rational part. Well, it takes charge, clean logic, clear thinking. But your own problems, that's a complete different story. Your amygdala fires up, that's your fear center. And it's not just processing now, no, it's, it's pulling up every related failure, every past hurt, every worst case scenario. You're trying to decide about the job and, and suddenly you're remembering that presentation you bombed in 2019. What does 20 2019 have to do with anything. Your brain doesn't care. It's all connected in there. So research shows we, we process our problems in near mode, overwhelming detail, intense emotions. All those problems, it's in far mode, abstract, manageable, solvable. So think about it like this. It's like trying to read a book with your nose pressed against the pages and that versus holding it at arm's length, right? One way you see letters, the other way you see words. Same book, completely different experience. And that brings us to the crazy part. So in 2017, researchers published a study in scientific reports where they scanned brains using fMRI and ERPs while people use different types of self-talk. Here's what they found. Third-person self-talk reduced emotional reactivity within the first second of viewing aversive images. The first second, without enhancing cognitive control markers. Translation, well, your emotional reaction drops instantly. And here's what's wild. Your brain doesn't have to work harder. It's not like forcing yourself to calm down or something. No, it just happens. See, participants displayed less brain activity in the medial prefrontal cortex. That's a self-referential processing region associated with painful emotional experiences and rumination. So you're literally bypassing the me, me, me circuits, the one that make everything personal, everything painful, everything stuck. You're accessing the same neural pathways you use when you're brilliant at solving everyone else's problems. But wait, what about getting older and wiser? Surely experiences fixes this, right? Now, Ethan Cross at University of Michigan discovered something brilliant. In his 2014 study in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology, he found that using non-first-person pronouns and your own name during introspection, it enhances self-distancing. So instead of thinking, I need to leave this job, you think Gregory needs to leave this job, if your name is Gregory. <laughs> yes, I know, it sounds ridiculous, but studies demonstrated that using non-first-person pronouns made people perform better, according to objective raters, when 
dealing with stress, public speaking, first impressions, all of it. Look, Julius Caesar did this, LeBron James does it. LeBron needs to be aggressive tonight. I know it, it sounds weird, but they're using a neuroscience hack that creates psychological distance. And here's the thing about age. Grossman tested younger adults, like 20 to 40, and older adults, 60 to 80. The effects were comparable. No difference. Your 60-year-old self will be just as bad at, at taking their own advice as your 20-year-old self. But the hack works at any age. So here's exactly what you do. Next time you're stuck on a personal decision, write about it using your name. Not, I don't know what to do, but Gregory, if your name is Gregory, doesn't know what to do. Then write the advice you'd give if your best friend came to you with this exact problem. Be specific. What would you tell them? Why? What are they not seeing, right? So this isn't some meditation that takes years to master. It's a linguistic switch that works immediately. You already have the wisdom. It's just locked behind the wrong pronoun. So I want to know, what's the advice you all Always give others but never follow yourself. Seriously, is it trust your gut or you deserve better or just be honest? Drop it in the comments below. I read every single one and it helps me understand what you're dealing with. Now, if you want to dive deeper into the self-distancing techniques and, and really master your brain's blind spot, this is what we tackle in the Brain Coach Certification Program at brainacademy.com. Brain out. Sharp.